Welcome to Rude Awakening, the podcast. We assume that you're here because you've watched our documentary and we would just love to take the conversation a little further uh, in a weekly format. We will come together, discuss quotes and inspirations from the documentary and invite you, our followers, into the conversation with us. It would be great to say, well, you know, I know every morning nine o'clock I need to do this now. But, you know, that would also mean that um, I'm having an idea again and that I'm mentalizing it. So always feeling what is it that I'm needing now? You know, is it is it the physical movement? Is it the spiritual movement? Is it the emotional movement? Whatever it is. Welcome to this uh, week's podcast, where um, normally we would use a quote from the film Rude Awakening and uh, dive deeper into it, or as we say, unpack it. But we were having a chat this morning at um, Sandra's kitchen table, is usually where all the brilliant ideas form. (laughs) And we were talking about the distractions that are out there at the moment and the need... um, with a choice to really stay with yourself, really stay grounded in in your own feelings and um, making sure that you slow down. And we thought it might be a really cool opportunity to spend this podcast talking about the effects of uh, the world changing at the moment and, and how do you stay upright into it? And what is the daily self-maintenance that you still have to do or want to do? Um, what is your uh, initial <laughs> idea? Hi. It's interesting how we always have those conversations and then later on go, we should have recorded this. So <laughs> this morning, you just interrupted me and you went like, no, let's go record this. So I agree. It's uh, I think it's very relevant um, and might be interesting for our listeners to tune into what does it mean to not get distracted these days? And, and, and we all know what our own safe zone or own zone is where we can be ourselves and where you know we can be in connection with the self but not be carried away by the by the loud noises outside by the distractions and by mass consciousness because it's also it's the world we live in right so for me it's always been a huge split between worlds like I, I'm either <clears throat> extremely um, almost putting myself behind barricades, uh, putting up the walls and, you know, the little fortress that nobody can meet, can can dis- disrupt me in. Uh, or I'm out in the world, but I'm also subject to all of the notions and all of the opinions and all of the um, judgments and all of that. So for me, it's always been very difficult to come to a sweet spot and find what is that space that I can... But is is it for you always an, 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 an is it for you a case of always on always off or is or is there do you notice that there is a more elegant way of of being in both? It's that's really what we talked about last week, right? Where it used to be very much on or off. There there wasn't the in between time where I could really find oh I can be like that in this world it's for me it's for me quite a task to to stay centered to stay grounded um, but to to still engage and um, connect with life so I'm finding new angles of interacting with the world um, as we speak that's why it's so important to sometimes go well let's just share this because I think most of the time we underestimate how much of a theme it is that we are going through as not a group but you know people that are sensitive and that are feeling the changes and the consciousness in, of this world affect them so uh, that's why sharing is so important yeah you're not, you're not crazy you're not alone 
Exactly, and I think also for me, the the, the last couple of weeks, uh, you know, the movie's out, the website's up, the podcasts are running, so all of the things that we needed to do or our humans needed to do to promote this thing are running. But it's there's still an idea of wanting to do it in the old, learn to make a, a big, big bullet list and then just run through it and do it and I have to call that person. And, um, and I found that the time spent alone or and also not being distracted by social media or games or whatever is really important for me to feel what the next step is it, and and i think as you know when i was approaching this this um moment in my life where i i had a certain realization where there is a relative balance between my divine and my human um I still had the spiritual idea of, oh, but then nothing's going to affect me. Or, you know, I'm, I'm going to walk through life with like a, <laughs> you know, a, a Jesus-like uh, aura around me. And, and it's, it's, it's uh, I think it's, it's still coming home that that's really, really, really not what's happening. It's, it's still like going to the gym. There is a daily maintenance. If I choose to do it, I can also choose to not do it. But there is a moment where it just it you know mass consciousness or my brain or the things i think i need to do should take over and if i am not quiet or you know i do it by taking very long walks in nature if i don't do that i really get very very ungrounded and very like at a certain point annoyed even with myself and people around me so you're right there is a beautiful dance between doing that with yourself and learning what it is that you need to do because it took me a long time to figure out and it, it keeps changing yeah like for me not every day is the same like this morning uh, you, you know usually i'm not really a morning person i don't really like to start my day with a thousand things to do but this morning i felt i had to walk so um my dog looked at me and really wondered like wait a second it's nine o'clock what are we doing well why are we walking <laughs> something wrong he went to the car he's like we must have an appointment because this doesn't mean that we're yeah, walking yeah, yeah, no we're walking what can only be the vet yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly but no we were walking um and it keeps changing and that flexibility to to really feel what is it because we are creatures of habit we are creatures of patterns so it would be great to say well you know i know every morning nine o'clock i need to do this now but you know that would also mean that um, i'm having an idea again and that i'm mentalizing it so always feeling what is it that i'm needing now you know is it is it the physical movement is it the spiritual movement is it the emotional movement whatever it is but it's becoming more simple because it is the one thing but how do you I need yeah but how do you feel because because I think I think now you're you're working for you know you're very good in, intuitively but how is it for you know the moments you you you're so distracted or so irritated that you can't feel like how do you how do you do that then what is your method to getting back to that feeling because when you know when you feel it, it's it's relatively simple to go, what do I need? But I think for, for most, and for me on days where I'm, you know, where my mind is overflowing, that's the one thing that I'm lacking is feeling or intuition. I can't get to it because I'm already over, you know, I already went so across my boundaries. So what do we boundaries. tend to do? We tend to be very brutal and very relentless and judgmental of ourselves rather than how would we speak to... Um, how would we speak to a small kid? You know, yeah. go like, okay, if you can't say there's a kid throwing a tantrum and you really feel, you know, empathy and compassion for it because it's quite obviously very upset, you don't say, well, you know, calm down. It's a typical thing, right? Like, n never in the history of calm down has it ever worked to tell somebody it, 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 it anybody actually calm down no yeah. no nobody nobody can just get there from that place so what do you need in that moment and that can be just taking a small step back and you know okay i know it's always good for me to listen to this kind of music or to go for a walk or um to call my friend or to have a nap so i think facilitating the next step back to self that's really important rather than being so cruel to yourself and expecting that you could be in the zen mode within you know the blink of an eye and that's then get just, more angry that you aren't that you well, ain't we've all been there right <laughs> yeah. so 
I think that's the part, the biggest part of getting to know yourself, why it's so important sometimes to spend such a long time in that phase of getting to know yourself. And it keeps going, but somebody that starts that journey, uh, you're not going to be on the mountaintop, blissful, the blissful ninny on the mountaintop. <laughs> you, you'll be that person that still is confronted and affected by life. So what do you need? And only you can answer that for yourself. Like even your best friends, even your spouse, even the people in your life that know you the best will never be able to tell you what you could do. They be they could be a reminder, you know, like when I'm really lost, for example, it might be good when Jonathan says, you know, hmm, maybe try this. Oh, okay, thanks for the reminder. But ultimately it is the self-responsibility to know myself well enough and to then take that step rather than well, postpone and, it. And the fact that you listen to me or anybody for advice means that you, A, you asked for advice willingly and you're open for it because the situation you're in, you don't, you no longer want to be in. So it's, it's still your own choice in the end. It's not, you know, I'm not saying anything particularly earth shattering. I'm just, you know, you ask, can you remind me? I remind you and then you can say yes or no. So I think, I think that's, that's, that's a, a good, good analogy too. And I, and I think I really resonate with, uh, with the be kind to yourself because I used to be so harsh on, you have to be this and, and especially you know, what does a spiritual realized person look like well i wasn't a little bit off i was in, it was incredibly off like that what i'm now experiencing is is nothing like that i'm still human i still have my human things i still go through to, to the daily tasks sometimes too mental or or overdo it so it, it's not the the solution that fixes everything uh, but i'm noticing what you're saying if i'm kind to myself then I could, because I would, I would, for instance, I would never take a nap in the afternoon, ever, because I felt useless. I felt I have too much to do. Now I do it almost every day. And then I, I, after half an hour, an hour, I wake up and I'm energized. I really can think straight. I can feel myself again. And and it's just the judgment of you're lazy. You're not worth anything. You should be, you know, frantically running around doing stuff. Um. But it's only because I'm, I can be kind to myself that I can allow myself to take a nap, take a walk. Oh, I have so many things in the agenda. Fuck them all. I'm going to take care of me first. And then going back to the agenda, usually, I get, I get it done 10 times quicker. And knowing yourself in the sense that you can maintain a short-term comfort um, and a long-term comfort. I think those are two different, for me, it's two different things. So while you know like in the long term if i always just take a nap that's not going to be very helpful for me then i'm you know back to procrastinating or you know if i if i always try to push myself so i think it's that you know be kind to yourself what do you need right now and how can you keep that up for a longer time and how can you also align your life in that sense that you know you can become that that ever-growing person that that becomes flexible and that becomes um, willing to make the changes that you have to to get out of your rut because you know the last thing that I want to do when I'm upset is calm down that's it just doesn't come natural and then and, and that's the part where I say you know don't be cruel to yourself because quite obviously you're not in the mode now but how, how can you facilitate those small steps towards it and and then really realizing it's not a small step. And for me, like a, a great example, when you say the slow down part versus the relaxed part, I've had a huge insight the last days. I was cleaning up my garden plants for spring and um, really feeling this, okay, I, I need to relax, I need to relax because I've been feeling that, you know, like the hundred radio stations in my head just keep blaring and I'm finding it really difficult at the moment to quiet my mind then I immediately translate that to, oh, I just need to relax. But that pushes another <laughs> agenda that I'm having. Oh, okay, now on top of everything else that I need to do, I also need to relax. And that is a mental idea. And what I kept hearing while I was doing the plans was just slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down. That was everything that I could feel. And then realizing, okay, so it's, slowing down in my head slowing down the pace of the one thought chasing the other 
okay, one thing at a time. And no matter how busy I am, I am always able to do one thing at a time. I can't do two things at a time. I, I'm, I think that I can think five thoughts at the same time and that that could be more productive, but it actually <laughs> yeah. isn't. So the slowing down, become present in the moment, really be in the present now moment. Be where you are and then take the next step out of inspiration yeah. rather than out of you have to from yourself. Yeah, it, 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 I, I love that uh, when you shared that earlier. I love that analogy so much because you know telling yourself to relax while you're basically just on the point of neurotic being totally neurotic is, is you know it's the same as saying to yourself calm down but i'm not i can't calm down yeah. you fucking asshole stop telling me that but i can't slow down I, I had it even yesterday walking through the through the woods and i usually have a very brusque pace um and i'm like what are you fucking walking so fast for you know, just slow down, turn your podcast off, walk like like you, you know, have a care in the world and then really absorb, you know, this lovely nature instead of just plowing through it because you want to do 13K today. So all of that is an, an idea. And then I slowed down. I was like, yeah, what am I rushing for? Even if I don't make the 13K, who gives a shit? So it's, it's, it's a combination of ideas that I put myself in and a certain, you know, getting used or being used to when I walk, I walk fast. Who invented that? When you run a marathon, maybe, but yeah. So it's it's interesting what's what the word slowing down actually does. And it's also changing the different um, ways of being in this world. Sometimes you know I need to consume things. Sometimes I need to produce things. And there's a third one where I don't need to do any of those, where I can really be in the in the nothing and I can't prevent my head from thinking that's always going to happen but I can choose what what pace and what mode I'm in and 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 that's becoming more and more important I think the louder this world is getting the bigger the distractions are getting the more important it is to really know okay so what's present here now you know do I need to do something do I just need to consume some something or can I just sit there and stare holes into the nothingness which I'm you know I'm enjoying more and more actually but how is that for you I, I mean I know that we have different ways of uh, slowing down or relaxing or putting the mind at ease I, I tend to have a hard time with that uh, and it has to do with with my mind I'm very active I'm very pragmatic I'm very I have a lot of ideas how to get to certain points and especially with this movie you know I feel responsibility to make sure the the, the world gets to watch it but I find myself constantly running into the, into my own wall of hey uh, you know you have this 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 strategy and then there's a huge idea like the wall is a huge idea with a planning and an agenda and an outcome and a, and, a, and luckily i've seen them now without having to run into them uh, as i did in the past so now i can just see oh hey but that's an agenda and that's an that's an idea i can't let that go and then almost focus on the pure or the initial passion of i w i love this movie to reach a lot of people and that's a very pure thought they're just like oh that, that's i love it and then it comes yeah but i also want to make money of it yeah that's of course you do but that's already an agenda you know it might come back to you in energetics it might come back to you in different uh, other projects you don't know but the more i fill it in the less open i am to my own magic that the stuff that i always talk about um now it's 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 i'm starting to see the correlation between slowing down and the daily maintenance of I need to take a walk, I need to take a nap, I need to, you know, am I calling this person for my, you know, I need to get it off my agenda or I need to get something or am I calling this without an agenda and going, oh, I love to put my enthusiasm and my passion out there and connect with that person on that level and I have no outcome, it could be the last call I ever make with them. But if I do that, the call is usually very unexpected and very fun, even does even if it doesn't go anywhere. So then I've won. I've done something intuitively. I had a great conversation. I shared some ideas and that's it, which is, I think, the whole idea of being on the planet as well. But the moment I take, I slow down and I take the maintenance time to 
get back to myself. Even taking a massage the other day, it's like it really, really made me see how much stored trauma and stored uh, tenseness was really still in my body. And I'm constantly in pain, my back's out and blah, blah, blah. So that's also a piece of maintenance. Instead of just, you know, walking for 12K and, and going to the gym, it's like your back is hurting. It means you, you've took, you mm. took too much on. Now go to an energetic masseuse that can both service your body and see the energetics that you can let go of. Ah, Before and life needs to slow you down, right? Like, for Because that's next. Yeah, you know, that, that's what happened to me. Um, three years ago when I broke my foot because you know then I just couldn't do anything then then you're on your ass for three months yeah. and 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 to be ahead of that a little bit just to see how much tension is in my system that I can slowly you know just release now open the valve just go okay so that the pressure is gone right uh, and for me it's it's really the broad strokes like you say high very high level you know what keeps me enthusiastic what gets me excited how do i feel oh you know that's just that's just what i love so when i'm in that mode then i don't think about details i don't think about oh yeah but then i need to do this and then i need to call this person and then you know in two weeks i need to remind them no then let it go the broad strokes follow your self-maintenance make sure that you are um connecting with yourself on a daily basis and let the details go and whenever the details come check how free am i to let those details go how free am i to say like well and if it happens in a different way that's fine too. can you hold it lightly yeah and if i'm noticing that i can't well it's time to distract myself it's time to to just do something else because then i'm just grinding yeah and I love that because because I used to find to distract myself, and I used to do it a lot. But then I I always woke up with the guilt, or almost had the guilt about it. Because yeah, but now you're just distracting myself. But sometimes when my mind is just going berserk, it's basically telling it to to you know calm down, be cool, yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, relax. It just can't. So it, that's the perfect opportunity to drop whatever the fuck I'm doing distract myself, have a glass of wine, go to the movies, play a game, do so, anything but. And then when you, when, when, when it's sort of, when the wave of, of your mental chatter has, has died down, then review it. Like, okay, well, how am I feeling now? What is the first, not, not the next 10 steps, what's the first step I want to take and what's the next step I can take? And again, be kind to yourself, put yourself in that position and then go, oh, oh, I really feel like now you know, writing the press kit. Okay, is that really what you want to do? Yes. Cool. And then, and then it just, it's just, it's so simple. But it's again, you know, the distraction part, I really do a lot now. But it's short little bursts, because I also know if I play the game too long, or if I, I'm social media too long, or I watch too many movies or drink too much wine, you know, especially on the wine part, I'm ungrounded for at least the next two days. But it's also and I sure as fuck can't. But do that's anything. the also you know trading the long term comfort yeah. for the short term enjoyment. So I think knowing, and that's also why a lot, I think a lot of older people wouldn't want to trade with the young folks now because you've you've, you've been through that and that had had its value and and that was a great time. But now having the wisdom of all of that going like oh okay, but I know. You know that's not really serving me and and where i want to go and how i want to flow another insight that i was having this morning as, as i was walking uh with neo with my dog was really for the longest time i felt like when i was connecting with my soul or with that inner voice and that intuition and that um connection with myself I felt like I was floating off, you know, I always felt, I always judged myself for, oh, you're not really here now, you're not really present, you're in La La Land, um, and that's just wishful thinking. I need to be realistic, I need to bring it back, you know, and, and re so I always, always used to punish myself for wanting to go back into that connection that's why it was the either or you know like either i was in this oh everything is light and in a way love. you separated yourself oh absolutely and now um this morning as i was walking that inner voice came back and it said like i've always guided you just sometimes you were too stubborn to listen so that that part of that wisdom 
that guidance, that true self-connection was always there and it pulled me into the now and it really made sure that that's now my true north. And now it's becoming so normal for me to be in that connection that I almost forgot um, that I used to punish myself for it or judge myself for connecting with it and thinking like, oh, that's just wearing the rose tinted glasses for too long. Yeah, or being f- feeling naive or, you know, I'm, I'm a dreamer, but I can't get anything done. And yeah. It's, it's uh, well, you know, I think it's now becoming our greatest asset, our greatest, you know, superpower is to be literally in a place of quietness where you can hear your nos or your intuition or your heart or whatever you want to call it and then on the other hand then knowing when it's time to go into action i always had this analogy um about the female and the male you know energy inside of you so the female energy will just you know explore galaxies without a specific target or or a purpose finds a star that shines very bright and then oh i like to explore that and then almost calling the male energy to to then you know send the probe out and and go you know build something on that planet investigate it and usually the male energy then goes too far doesn't check in with a female like hey are is this still appropriate or am i just building for the sake of building uh the, the the original epiphany is it still active and when when we do check with that female or that intuition part um, it gives you a yes or a no. No, this was just a first step just for the experience of making that first step and it didn't have a purpose, so fine, let it go. Or this is amazing, let's do step two. But it's that constant back and forth between the, the intuition. The ebb and the flow, yeah. Yeah, between the intuition and the, and the mental, the execution part of it, um, the heart and the, and the mind, uh, if you will. And, and that's it's really fascinating to see that loop is now becoming more smooth I'm, I'm i'm and i'm still figuring it out i know it all but it doesn't mean i can apply it always as 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 elegantly as i wanted to and and then the only thing that keeps me from it is the judgment yeah that, that's it because if i don't judge i can make a mistake i can build too long as the guy i can also as the as the woman spent way too much time exploring dreams and never actually putting them to, to anything you know concrete but I'm aware of both, so I can I can sort of. You and know. it's it's the it's it's the it's almost like a contradiction. It's, so the human is on a journey of self discovery, but that journey has no end goal. Which is incredibly confusing for the human. Yeah, because you know we want to grow, we want to we want to have the goal, we want to reach the goal, we want to have that point of achievement as well. And that point of okay now I'm done, but this especially the journey of self discovery will never be done. You just keep exploring new layers, um, and more parts of yourself that have been in the way of that. And ultimately, all of this is not any of the human's responsibility. So is that is that comforting? If is that comforting to you, the fact that the 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 the, the journey never will never be done. I think now it is. Now I can I can just that's that's a part of forgiveness that I'm feeling, um, that I'm perceiving as kindness. Um, I don't need to figure this out. I don't need to fill it in. I don't need to have the answers. All I need to do is be in the experience of it. Um, hold things lightly and really be okay with anything that that is because quite obviously it is here which means it is in my experience and I can negate it and I can say like oh I don't want it but that just builds the resistance um, for more of those things to come around for me to finally go oh okay might have been good for something so it used to buck the shit out of me like the fact that because I was so used to studying and to learning and to being the good spiritual student um, that to even contemplate the fact that there's no ending and no goal that's achieved and then you know getting value out of achieving that goal and i do feel there's a certain plateau that i've reached or a certain place of balance where i can look back and go oh, oh now it's more quiet now it's more i can hear myself i actually my life's starting to get more synchronous more in flow but i'll never be done with 
the human emotions or the experiences that so come in, out of it. In the in the journey, that is a very dualistic journey um, that oscillates between good and bad and right and wrong and negative and positive. Um, we, in that linear experience as a human going on that timeline of being born until the day that we die, we just think like, okay, there's going to be this golden carrot that it's always that I'm always just chasing, but at some point at the end, I'll, 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 I'll get the carrot and then I'll eat it and then I'll die. But <laughs> I think ultimately for me, the goal, if there is one, it is to be so connected with myself that in any moment I'm good with what is. That for me is the biggest gift of being in this physical experience because whenever that part of me is present, anything that I'm experiencing is so much more colorful and so much more intense and so much more pleasant and nurturing for me. And, and the more that I'm not connected with that, the more I'm running after ideas. So I think that's really, again, bringing it back to the simple, <laughs> um, to the simple part, what, what also is ultimately the one thing that we can do in this podcast is just, you know, share our experiences uh, the way that we get there and then break it down to something that is so simple that you go like well it's too simple maybe well and that's usually and, and we talk a lot so we have the reference of that is like usually when something becomes so simple that means you've you, you've come closer to a balance or an integration with that because because usually mental concepts get more complex so if it's a psychological or philosophical Conundrum. Usually, then, then talking about it makes it even more complex. But I found certain, like exactly the example that you're giving now, things are becoming so ridiculously simple that I'm like, why the hell didn't I see that? But that's exactly the reason why you didn't see it because you made it more complex. The mind just loves to churn and to come up with ideas and be intelligent and everything. And I think this is going back to, you know, the reason for this particular podcast. Even if my mind is quiet and in balance, you still have to deal with mass consciousness. Yeah. You know, when I go into Amsterdam, uh, if I stay in the city too long, and it's make me sound like an old fart, but uh, it starts to affect me. I get thoughts in my head that aren't mine, that I'm just taking over because of the, you know, the stress of a city, the stress of living in a city. So even if, if I'm visiting and I'm completely okay, I can't stay in there too long. And and it it's so so there is and it's it's not good or bad, but it's just a fact of the moment you're quiet and you're balanced, you still have to deal with life. I mean, unless you live somewhere out in the woods, but you still have to go to a shop once in a while to buy stuff. So I think that never changes. Um and and that's also something to to to, to deal with. I can be as balanced as they come. Anytime I have an interaction or I watch the television or, or my phone or I look at social media, I'm, I'm energetically interacting with the collective, which is also what, what I want to be part of because otherwise I wouldn't have a body. But it's interesting. So it's, it's, that's kind of a, a, contra, a contradiction is that, yeah, you want to be free. You want to be sovereign. You want to be in balance. But as long as you're on the planet, you, you know, there's there's almost like they say in the Matrix, you know, there's certain rules that apply. There's certain. I think that's that's a that's a really good point because ultimately that's why a lot of, um, you know, we come from the spiritual background. So let's keep it to spirituality. That's why spiritual communities are so popular. And you know, <laughs> thinking of you know the the retreats that you can do in you know. South America or you know in France or you know somewhere where it's really holy and sacred and those communities are mostly in eco villages um, you know they're self supportive they they're not really dependent on a lot of outside energy and while you're in there you're in that bubble and it's and it's usually great oh absolutely Absolutely, and that's 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 my whole point. So you know, you're you're in the physical human experience, and you've shut out the outside noise by putting yourself into this into this spot where everything is bliss and everything is love and light. And you know, you can there's certain group rules that everybody um, tends to, so everybody just gets along with it. But as soon as you 
you know, dip a toe into the outside world again, you're right back to square one. So making it, um, making it balanced, my experience as a human, it needs both because I am this human being that also has the human mind and that, that lives in a world where, yes, I make my own reality, but not by excluding anything. Well, and I think that's that's basically going past the dualistic nature of things is not ignoring it, but saying there is no black and white, there is no light and dark, there is not there is there is just everything, and I'm not gonna be biased towards you know there's things that I like and, and dislike, but if it's all my you know my energy reflected back to me in physical, then it's all me. So it's the dark and and the, the the less judgment I have on it, the more it integrates. And that's an experience I actually just have the last couple of months, especially. Uh, the less resistance, the less judgment, the less agenda. And now the things I thought I couldn't possibly look at without any sort of judgment. It's just one breath and it's done. So I, I think that's that's that might be also why why a lot of spiritual doctrines get stuck. Uh, or a lot of people get stuck, including myself, because I believe that for 30 plus years, um, you step into this bubble, you, you do the kumbaya thing, and it's fantastic. And sometimes you really need a retreat like that. So there's also no judgment on doing that, but you do phase out a lot of the real world out there. Which and I think I think for us too, I think what, what also makes us connect so well is that both of us, you and me, are very... We love to be in life. We love to be grounded. We come from, you know, sort of more more poor social housing kind of neighborhoods in, in, in the cities we grew up in. But I love those kind of people. I love the little markets. I love the, the working class. You know, the, the I, I always love, I love my, my head is in the clouds, but my feet is in the mud. And I've ne- and I never let that go. I always, I always find it very refreshing to have two perspectives at the same time that, that basically ground me here. How's yeah, that for you? Absolutely, you know, like being able to to swear like a builder um, on a construction <laughs> site, or to, you know, have the fine etiquette dining. I mean, I'm I'm now able to do both and get away with both, and and but I I need both in a way as well, and then everything else around it. So I think for me, it's it's really important to you know not shut any part of that out, and to be aware that. I need to embrace all of it because as as soon as I go, you know, it's only this, yeah, then I'm basically just exchanging the one for the other. And what was interesting, um, I spent some time with my family uh, yesterday and I was speaking with my sister, which is always fun. And we were talking and she was saying like, oh yeah, but that's that's that bubble, right? Like you, you you're in that bubble there. Which I thought was interesting because, yes, absolutely. You know, I think you and I, or you know, the people that follow Rude Awakening for a while, like you could say that's a bubble. But then, isn't everything? Everybody is in their own bubble of their own reality, which is made up by whatever resonates with your energy and your frequency. So, you know, somebody who's who's very. Um, it's an interest group, basically. Yeah, but, you know, just because the interest group might be millions strong still makes it a bubble, I think, you know, so yeah. you could say, oh, you know, and, and now, I, you're, now you're really separating yourself and you're in your own little bubble. I think everybody lives in their own bubble. Yeah, yeah and, and whether you, you have a sort of sexual inclination or an identity inclination or I'm a guy, I'm, I'm a woman, I'm, I'm, I'm a successful this, I'm a, I mean, we do it, I think we stack them on top of each other, like constantly. The human I have, need for um, labels and identities and to belong, yeah. right? And 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 we had a really interesting discussion about the comments on Rude Awakening and, and 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 some some people that basically don't agree with how we did it or, or like slightly negative. And for the first time, I really I'm really okay with it because it's it's just a different opinion. And if I was really really like invested into you know anything else, then I, I, I'm very proud of what we've done. And I want this movie to be seen by millions, but I'm not pretending it's the truth. I mean, it's very clear in the movie itself. Uh, it's just a very personal experience of how how I I choose to do it and how you choose to do it. Uh, 
so it, it's 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 actually great to feel that I'm not really faced by those opinions, and actually encourage like that's the whole point of the movie: have different perspectives. And yes, we can gather as a group of like, fine, thankfully, we're not alone, we're not crazy. Here's somebody who talks about like spirituality in a very grounded, kind of fun, you know, new new media kind of way. But it doesn't need that doesn't mean you have to do it the same or agree with us. And and I think that's a such a big difference to feel that for the first time, because I used to be very precious about my products. To go, no, did I make the best I could? Yes. Would I do it differently now? Of course I would, because I'm growing too. I'm learning too. But I don't have an agenda about it anymore. So it's, it's even though we're a group, it's, it feels free. I don't, have a, I don't need to steer the group. I don't need to teach the group. I don't need to, you know, if anything, they're inspiring me at the moment. So it's to really feel it versus think it, because, oh, that's the right thing to do spiritually, I think is a huge difference. And... It it, 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 really. I'm really glad that it is a group. It is an interest group. It is a group I choose to identify with at the moment. But it's not stuck. It it can go anywhere. If the group dissolves, fine. We had a nice run, and and I'll keep doing what I'll, I'm doing. I think the flexibility to be okay with um, it it almost makes because I remember the way that I used to think about it. Like, had you told me like 10, 15, 20 years ago, like you'll become very diplomatic, you know. The word Sandra and diplomatic, those two never <laughs> went together. It was, it was. You know, ask my parents, ask my sister, anybody that knows, knows me from back then. It really didn't feel that that would be achievable for me to be a diplomatic person because I thought I needed to be diplomatic for others. Now that I've come to a certain flexibility within or holding things lightly, I'm discovering when anybody confronts me with something that, yeah, you know, I might not choose or that that's not something that I get excited about. I'm not saying it's wrong or, you know, oh, I don't like it and I don't have a judgment on it. I just go, yeah, I can see, you know, I can see that that works for you or and then but it's interesting because I'm hearing myself say it and then usually get the response like, oh, that's very diplomatic of you to say. <laughs> but I'm not being diplomatic for the sake of it. I'm not being diplomatic because I don't want the confrontation. It's more that I see everybody just has their own ways of expressing themselves, but I don't have to agree. Well, and I think, I think if we in ourselves are more balanced, then you don't need the, the confirmation either. So you don't, because don't, I used to get very up in arms about something that I secretly was not so sure about myself yeah, yeah. and then somebody would poke the fire like reflect something in them and then I would judge them or I would I would feel caught or and now you know I know exactly what what makes me tick and what I want and what I don't want but none of it is is very rigid anymore so people can disagree with me all day now and it's like okay cool and it's really cool I'm not just saying yeah. it to be diplomatic I think that's different um, but I think the hardest part for me was being cool with myself yeah. and not having those big ideas out of defense of out of I have to prove something now I don't have to prove anything anymore but that's that's relatively new that I don't have my own agenda so now I can actually listen to other people a lot better and be inspired by them right. even though they might not share your taste exactly yeah and I know very well that my taste is well to say it mildly is eclectic and it becomes even more eclectic and that's that's great i love i love contrast even even in freedom or even in, in a balanced life i love extremes and and they're not extremes as as in drama anymore thank god but in terms of art i like weird that, films like, and weird, s- weird 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 art things and if you if you say that that's a preference of yours um it's probably like a signature preference that's always been there yeah how has your life in its response to you changed over the years um it's an inter- it's an interesting question because i used to love extremes and used to like f- have people around me that were quite extreme my whole life and look at them like oh i wish i was th- i was like that i wish i was like that free and and you know only to figure out that a lot of those guy uh, the uh, guys and girls were ex- in fact so extreme to to basically overshadow the trauma of some sorts and 
I didn't want to be extreme or really almost commit to that because I didn't trust myself. I thought, oh, I, I would get stuck in it or I would go into a dark place where I couldn't get out of. So I was always doing it through other people. And now that I'm more free and more in balance with myself, I'm totally okay to do whatever, but I don't have to do it anymore. It's really funny. So, so I'm, I'm able to now to choose it freely and I don't have to because there's nothing in my life that needs that extremity except for maybe art f because it's fun in art. And that's a free choice, right? Yeah. So, so you know, I used to watch very violent movies and now actually I don't really like it anymore because I don't need that type of stimulation. What I do like is movies that have an extreme contrast. So a very spiritual movie with an extremely, you know, down to earth or, or, or funny, dark edge to it where you go, okay, these two shouldn't be together and they're together. But that's more the abstract or the, the contrast of that than, than but drama I'm, I'm really that's so funny so so the moment I dare to to completely be open and, and okay with my own darkness I don't need it anymore because mm. I don't I don't have I don't need that evolve anymore so it's really funny uh, contradiction so I think it's always interesting to you know if somebody asks me well how do I know when I've made it or how do I know when I'm there it's relatively simple for me you know just look at your life and it's how it responds to you you know do you have a lot of drama in your life are things mainly working out for you how do you deal with disappointments that's your answer right there do you have a very rigid idea of where you're going and you get very disappointed when it doesn't happen yeah 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 it, it, it's it is <laughs> It is that simple. It is that simple. But getting there, and, and I think that's that's for, for for me as well. Like I can talk about it now because that extremity, um, I put myself through the ringer. I know you put yourself through the ringer with with quite unpleasant uh, situations. And and it's we said a while back. It's almost comparable to these these waveforms. So you have really high high peaks and really deep lows mm -hmm. like all the, the oscillation of the waves form goes really high really yeah. low so you get this wave and f for me now it's it's very there is a wave there's a wobble but it's like one twentieth of, of what it was and even that I sometimes consider too much that little that slight little <laughs> so you, do, you you understand that you know probably what you used to think about people like you now <laughs> when people look at us they're just go like oh they've just become very eh, boring to <laughs> boring and with. flaccid and, and like <laughs> hello it's like church on sunday kind of like yeah uh, but that's fine too well and i'm, and I'm finding I, i am finding now that that's I'm getting a little bit more used to, familiar to that energy not being so extreme. My mind also finds it boring or used to find it boring. And now it just, it's just, it's happy that it is in this place. But now slowly creativity starts coming back in that same free way. Uh, writing and, 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 and going to art fairs. And it's just really, it's slowly, it's come, like I have the capacity to allow that back in. And I'm noticing there, it, it's it's so much more pleasant and free also. And and I can just paint without having an idea or having a, a structure or having a So a the goal. intensity uh, goes from maybe unpleasant drama in your life to f excitement and um, feeling deeply. Yeah. Rather than, you know, being carried away by your emotion now feeling deeply in a different way and i used to have I, i used to have i used to need very big extremes to feel and i need even bigger extremes to almost like transmutate or like oh my pop myself through because I, i was always afraid that if i would pop myself through i would explode or or you know leave this planet or get so angry that nobody you know when people lock me up um And now it's the opposite. Now it's it's it's. I need very little movement and a little bit of passion, and and then the knowledge or the wisdom that I am asking for is coming back. So I don't I don't need people, other people, and I don't need extreme situations anymore. But that's again, and I was saying this before. This is only eight nine months fresh, 
and I'm getting to grips with almost like they're writing the new handbook. Like, how do I work without the drama? <laughs> yeah. How does passion work? Am I passionate? Am I boring? Am why I? Why would you? Why would you stay on Earth, right? Like, if 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 you choose to not engage anymore in the in the in the typical human distraction or have no reactions whatsoever then then kind of your work is done and 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 at the moment i i, I love to just stay here for a while and play with the, that new dynamic oh i still love going into traffic and getting really angry at people cutting me off and everything <laughs> that's but that's a, it's almost like a choice insert right? like, really harsh german superlatives here <laughs> yeah or going to the supermarket and being really annoyed by people's spatial awareness and personal space and <laughs> so but now it's it's almost like it doesn't irritate it doesn't stay with me i can shake it off it's almost like like a dog that shakes hold, hold it. and it's sometimes yeah. it's also fun i sometimes love to just get irritated by by fucking morons and then pretend i'm i'm the all seeing eye but then you can laugh about it later and both at, about both at the morons and and my yeah. sort of incredible little, <laughs> you know you know, superhuman uh, guru complex, yeah. and, and it's it. It used to be like hours, and I keep that irritation with me. And now it's just halfway through the reaction, I'm I'm actually laughing at myself. Yeah. It's like, dude, come on. <laughs> They're not going to change, and and you can either laugh about it, or walk around it, or or just try to move an unmovable rock. Well, move yourself then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, beautiful, Jonathan. I I, I really loved um, the flow of this yeah. free flow episode. For a spontaneous <laughs> uh, dive again. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, even though we haven't really talked about a quote from Rude Awakening, of course, you can still go and check it out on our website, rudeawakening-film.com. Watch it for free. Uh, if you want to dive more into the undistracted, undisrupted interviews, we have this bonus material package that you can purchase for only a few bucks, uh, where you can really have a deep dive into the behind the scenes and all of the all of the wisdom that's shared by our interviewees and um, the journey that, yeah, that we've made making this beautiful documentary. Please share it with your friends and family. We are wanting to make this go viral as much as we can uh, there's only two people here on this end but there's hundreds of thousands of you out there so um, let's keep sharing it share the love share the wisdom and share the fun and and keep talking guys uh, and girls just really really keep talking to each other to to each other online and um even the, the subject of this uh this episode like how how do you you know how do you maintain yourself what's your maintenance routine uh, we love to hear from you on, on the Rude Awakening um, group uh, on Facebook. Yeah, or uh, Just younger so people that are not on Facebook anymore. Uh, yeah. we're, also, <laughs> we're also on Instagram, on Twitter, on TikTok. Yeah, really, really don't be afraid to to share your thoughts and, and, and your routines and your insights because yeah, literally it's it's just too two uh, perspectives at the table here and there's hundred thousands or millions of you out there uh, that have similar if not completely different yeah ways that can inspire us so really really uh, start sharing if anything and if if you have any impulses for us to um for another episode of the podcast or for us to speak with other people um if you want to have us on your podcast you can write to us also uh, the one and only email address for all of that is podcast at rudeawakening-film.com and we wish you a great weekend and we'll hear you again next friday See you soon. Bye.